Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. Last month, Alan and I joined you to discuss uh, an, an issue that was growing, was developing uh, around the Samsung 840 EVO series of SSDs, uh, where we saw some fairly significant and widely impacted performance degradation. Read speed performance, yeah. Yeah, yeah, read mm -hmm. speed, which arguably is more important for most people <laughs> than write speed, because you're yeah. more than likely reading things more often than you're writing things. Um, so at that time, we, we kind of theorized about what was happening. We mm -hmm. theorized about what the fix would be. Right. Um, I don't know if we had or maybe had just been a couple of days short of actually getting an official response from Samsung at that time uh, in the previous discussion, uh, the previous video. We yeah, had. we got a non-detailed yeah. response shortly after that video, yeah. So in that interim time, that video went up September 23rd, uh, and today is October 15th as we record this, uh, we have a response from Samsung in the form of tools that will help address and fix the issue. Yes. So and let's... Um, that tool is actually out now. It's actually available to the public mm -hmm. now. We published yesterday on it, mm -hmm. but it is now as of, uh, I think, 10 o'clock this morning. So what is... Tell me what the process is that the tool takes you through if you have an A40 Evo SSD. Okay, so this is not your typical Samsung magician click on firmware update process. Okay. It is not the same thing, first of all, um, because there's some additional steps that must be taken with regard to how the flash was and is initialized within the SSD. So you have things like just voltage tolerances, just basically there's, there's data off to the side of right. those blocks of data that are stored. There's extra like metadata that deals with, you know, the voltages and how the drive tracks, how those voltages might drift over time as stuff was written and then mm -hmm. you waited a while and stuff like that. And if you don't handle that data properly, which is what the error was, that the drives were not correcting for drift in voltage The error time, is that the firmware was not recognizing that drift and it was treating it, it as an error that it had to correct, thus slowing down read speeds? It would eventually, like as it was trying to read data, it, it would have to have done that sort of a correction at some point to be able to read the data correctly, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but instead, it was kind of forcing itself to go through repeated ECC cycles over and over again. Right. Normally, if you come across a chunk of flash that had drifted slightly, it just sort of has an algorithm where it just kind of like, oh, okay, I need to adjust down to this slightly lower voltage tolerance for to read these bits. Right. And usually a drive would just kind of keep doing that. Yep. Right, until it needed to change it again. This time it was actually checking it for each. It was, it, from everything we've seen, that's not the official, you know, Samsung quote, but from sure. our observations, it looks like that's what it was doing. And there's some other things that needed to be done so that that whole procedure would work correctly moving forward. Okay. So it's, in other words, it's not just a firmware update. It's a multiple step process. So they released a performance restoration tool, which is... It will be the preferred way for you to get to this new firmware on the drive. Um, and the tool does do a up uh, firmware update first. Right? So you install the tool, um, gives you a list of applicable drives to update. It's real simple, real simple laid out. Um, you just choose your drive, hit update. It'll do the firmware update first, only takes a few seconds. And then it'll prompt to shut down the system. It's shut down, not reboot. Don't try to outsmart it and just reboot because if you don't power cycle the SSD, the firmware update was not applied. Okay. So as a matter of fact, if you just like, if you just reboot, soft reboot at that point, you might not even see the drive until you have power cycled the mm. system. So okay. that might freak you out. Freak you out, yeah. Yeah, if you tried to pull that. a shortcut, yeah. Um, so, I mean, if that's your boot drive, it would just show up as just no can't, operating can't system. Boot, yeah, Hopefully that, at that point you would shut it down. Yes, you should shut it down. It's, you should just let the updater shut down your system anyway. Okay. Um, then power it back up. You don't have to leave it shut down for any long length of time or anything. Once it comes back up, the tool will just automatically relaunch once you're back in Windows, and then it'll just go through the, re the remainder of the steps of the process, which is like a step one, two, three thing. It's really simple layout. Um, steps one and two seem to just do some kind of initialization just across all the flash. Um, so that just takes some amount of time depending on actually the capacity of your drive. So like the one terabyte Evo takes like five minutes to get through those. When you say it's initializing, it's doing something. We don't know exactly what, but okay. I mean, so that's we, that's the thing. Samsung didn't actually say what they didn't detail, the tool is doing, right? But we it's doing something. But we have some tools, and we can look at like what's going on, and that the drive was actually consuming a lot of power, 
Right. Yeah. So Windows yeah. sees nothing happening. That's that's kind of an interesting point. Right. And actually, the the stage where it's actually shuffling the data, mm -hmm. um, in other words, the step that will take a proportional amount of time to how full the drive is, mm -hmm. that's step three. Okay. Right. So step one and two will take like a few minutes, pretty much regardless. Then it'll get to step three. The updater will kind of hang at 80% for a, a minute or two, and then it'll start to progress. It'll go from 82% all the way up to like 90 something. And that band is where it's actually going across your whole drive. So if you have a drive with 20 gigs of data on it, it will take less time than if you have a drive with 200 gigs of data on yep. it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you can actually watch it go. And if the data, if you have that slowdown and you have not run one of those other kind of workarounds that people have done, mm -hmm. it's going to take longer because it has to be able to get past, you know, reading it in the old. It's going to read it in the slow. The, the kind of the old way as, as far as okay. what we can tell. Yeah. Um, but once all that is done, yeah, what's then, the result? Then that's it. Well, you get your your read performance will be what it was for files that had been freshly written. Okay. And it should stay that way. We can't confirm that part because well, that takes time. They haven't right? really said one way or the other, right? So we asked them specifically, like, hey, is this a one-time fix? Yeah, or it is. is it this... is a one-time fix. But I mean, the firmware is. Will you have to run this tool again? You, you think? Per, per them and per the tool itself, you're not supposed to be even be able to run it. Like, it won't let you rerun it. Like you, oh, really? You can't oh, even, okay. once you've done it to a drive, it doesn't let you redo you it. Could, you could reinstall the tool all you want. Like, it's just, there's so no the more stuff. The assumption start is if we take Samsung at their word, is that in two months' time, we'll obviously be doing this, right? We'll have data yep. on one of these drives. Yeah, we're going to put data on these. And we'll just sit there for a couple of months, mm -hmm. and then we'll test read speeds again. Yep. And see if the firmware or whatever the reshuffling of data Did fixed it. it. Yeah. Right? And it should. I mean, from everything that's been said and I don't see why they would go through What do you think about the to... safety of the firmware update and tool so far? OK, so uh, one of these drives, actually not the one here, no, one because it's, it's back in use over there, uh, had all of a bunch of Steam game downloads you <laughs> used for your, for your GPU test bed. It, it was the one drive we were actively using. Yes, yes. Well, uh, you know, we wanted to test this update, so we said, all right, well, it's a drive full of stuff. And uh, lo and behold, that one, it, it did the firmware update fine. It rebooted. Everything was still there. Went through its whole process, step one, two, three, said it was complete. Everything was still there. And then we rebooted again, and it turned out the master file table had corrupted at some so point. So we did lose all of the data on that drive. Yeah, it pretty much lost just about everything. Okay. Now, for, it wasn't a big deal for us. We just redownloaded all the Yeah, we could just get all stuff, that again. But yeah. for other users that are more than likely using a drive like this as their primary drive, yeah. uh, then you don't have that, that issue. So, mm -hmm. um, or you don't have that safety step, I guess. So back up your data. Anytime yes. you update the firmware on your SSD or your hard drive, really, we always recommend yep. to update. And I will say that uh, that one, it wasn't that one, but it was the other it was 500 the gig. Drive, yeah. um, it's, that one was reading very slowly, by the way, before we, uh, yeah. right? Because yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we were, the only reason we didn't kind of back up all those Steam downloads is just because it was painfully slow read speed. It was like 70, 50 meg per second read speed. So it was already at, you know, kind of in a bad shape. Yeah. You know, and um, so we just didn't bother with that. And then uh, the update itself didn't seem to take as long as you would think it would have to read that that whole drive at the slow speed. So maybe it kind of bypasses that. We just um, really don't know what it was. We don't know for sure, and we don't even know for sure if it maybe it went quickly because it didn't actually. Uh, you know, it was busy deleting mm. <laughs> all of the other stuff. So <laughs> we, we've seen some questions in the comments of the story. What yeah. about Mac users? What about Linux users? Because this is a Windows only tool for now. right. Uh, Windows only tool, and not only Windows only, but it will not run unless there's a partition on the drive, even if it's empty. Like it just won't. It no. says, okay. "Please initialize the drive first or something like that. Um, so for Mac and Linux. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work, but supposedly by the end of the month, we are due a uh, ISO slash DOS version of this firmware update. Okay. So all of the prior updates for Evos have been available either through Magician and Windows or through an ISO, and that's how they cover Linux and Mac. Okay. Right? Somehow they're going to do this in that kind of an update. Okay. I, I don't understand what it's going to do to do all that manipulation after the fact or how. Well, I mean, we saw that Windows wasn't really didn't think it was doing it anyway, right? That's true. It didn't really... So, in um, theory, it's kind of operating system agnostic. They just maybe right. need a way to fire it off. Yeah, you just need some kind of send the drive the command yeah. to do it. And yeah. either way, that's supposed to be coming. So you're not left out in the cold and, you know... Um, or if you have access to a Windows machine and you're able to back up that Mac and you, if you really want to do this right now, as long as you get the data off of it. Near the data, back it up somehow. Yeah, what the, what the put tool... Put a Windows partition on it. The, the current tool is going it. to expect 
like a single NTFS partition. So you have to get the drive to that state. So one person in the comments had, um, it, they're using it for a PS2 or a PS4. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, so it's, the tool's Tough. not going to understand what that is. But if you wait for the ISO version, you think that would be able to... It would probably, that. I'm assuming that's just partition agnostic, data agnostic. I don't think it's going to care. Like, how could it possibly be, be that smart to do yeah. Linux or, you know, HFS partitions and all in a That'd DOS tool? To see what it does with a PS4 yeah. Either way, operating system, file system. Back up. Like, image, back up, just, just in case, right? We did four drives successfully, no issues. One drive... It lost almost, an issue. almost everything. Uh, so. What about 840s, non-Evo? Okay, so there's an 840, and then there is a, um, there's another model number. Something, something, uh, like there's an 851 that's like an OEM version. Okay. That, that s most of them are like kind of 840 Pros, but some, there's like... Some variants of them are actually 840 like a, Evos. A user group that's really going to be looking no, for we, firmware updates. No, we had emails for an 851. People with like Dell OEM systems that had mm. that. That's like the OEM version of either the 840 Evo or Pro, right? And it's the same model that does the TLC or the MLC. Okay. Regardless, sure. we had we had people that were running the TLC version of that, which is the similar to the 840, mm -hmm. the standard 840. Uh, also report this issue, and then there's a bunch of posts on the overclock forums from the initial we thread. We definitely have seen same thing. Samsung, Samsung 840s. Yeah, we have we issue. have one. We have one here that did the same thing. Yep. And uh, but this this update does not apply to it. It does not, and I have not gotten an answer yet. It has been asked multiple times. So has Samsung even acknowledged that this problem exists on other drives than the 840 Evo? No, they have. They came out with the tool. Okay. They said the tool corrects an issue that only affects. The 840 Evo. So it's not kinda. it's not even the fact that the firmware doesn't fix the 840 yet. It's that they need to actually say, oh yeah, and also it affects the 840, and then maybe we'll get you that fix. Yes, and that as well. That has not happened yet. Okay. Uh, anything else that we want to discuss with this? I mean, we have if you go to PCPro.com, we have the story that lists the process, shows the screenshots. Yep. It's a pretty easy thing to do. Unless, Unless you're running these in a RAID. Okay, what happens then? We had a few, few people ask about, like, what do I do? They're in a raid. Oh, my goodness. So Because you don't have a normal partition on them. No, and it, the tool will not be able to, you know, do anything. to. Even if it saw them individually, they need to have a normal partition on them individually for mm -hmm. it to work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so here's the thing you do. Go dig through your closet, find a hard drive or something that can hold the contents of all of them. Mm -hmm. Install some imaging software on the, your raid. Okay. It sucks already. To go yeah, ahead. I know, I know. But you need some imaging software that can image the OS live to another drive, okay? Uh, I would just install the other drive in the system, too. Like, just straight to your SATA controller. Or go quicker that way, right? Uh, clone your OS over to the other drive, okay? Reboot to the other drive. Now you're in Windows. Make sure that you're in Windows on your other drive, and you can see the RAID kind of like as a secondary yeah. device, right? Yeah. Then reboot again. Switch your control to A... Or, wait, sorry. Break your RAID... Okay, go into your RAID no, software. No, this is still good. Yeah, no, this yeah, is yeah. great. This yeah, is wonderful. Yeah. Go, in, go into your RAID software, uh, remove your RAID, make it so it's not a RAID anymore, reboot, flip to AHCI mode because the updater won't work in RAID mode. Mm -hmm. This and, is great. Keep going. Okay. Now you're back in Windows and you see two individual drives and you're in AHCI mode. Partition them both individually. Run the tool on both of them individually. Go through the whole sequence. Then One recreate your thing. array. Nope. And then no. delete the partitions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then reboot again because you now have to flip back to RAID mode. Okay. Again. All right. This is good. Uh, so far. Yeah. This is. You guys ask for this if you want RAID SSDs and you get good speed, but you this know. This sucks. Okay. So. <laughs> so then. So now you're rebooted. You're back in RAID mode. Now you can recreate your array and then you can clone your OS back over to this array. And then once you're all said and done, you can change your boot order again back to your RAID of uh, Evos. This is why I don't ever use two of anything. This but is, that you argument, know, the argument of, oh, I'm just going to get, now I, have a, now I have a reason to say, should I get the 500 gig drive or should I get two 240s and rate them together? I'm going to say, well, if they update a firmware, you are hosed. Oh, well, yeah. You're, you're like, but it's you good every, it. it's good everywhere else. It's faster every, just, every other way. That's, that's dumb. Okay. Do you, if, if somebody wanted to wait, do you think, no. The ISO version would be able to do that on a RAID? Uh, I would still back it up first. Okay, so I would say it's worth waiting to see. Like you, going through you, all that hassle. You would have to still... Into this month, you said, for the ISO version, they claim? Yeah, they claim in the okay. month. You'd still have to reboot, flip, switch to AHCI mode, 
not RAID mode. Mm -hmm. That way, so the updater can see the drives. Right, and have it do its thing, and, and then it should just switch back to RAID and be able to boot off of it. Yeah, it, that should just work, assuming that the updater doesn't change anything. What on could the drive. go wrong? But st I would wrong? still say back it up. But yeah, that would make it easier. And then last point here on the MSATA. Yeah, MSATA 840 Evos, uh, same exact update, works all the same way. Everything's identical. You just, you Every know. pro and con we have discussed today is applicable yeah. to this. The, the updater works on these, and it will fix okay. the issue, and these are susceptible. So there you go. So uh, go to PCPro.com, check out that post. Uh, leave us our, your feedback in the comments about if it worked for you, if you thought it was a good process, if you have RAID drives and you're going to wait, or you're going to go through all that hassle that he just described. Yep. Very curious. Or if you have an 840 and you're waiting yes. for Samsung to say something, yeah, that comment there too. As well. Um, oh, and since the comments, there's so many comments on that, um, the site's kind of bugging. So uh, if you leave your comment and it gives you an error screen, your comment actually worked. You don't need to post it again. Okay. Just refresh the page. It's there. Sure. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll, I don't know, update you again if anything changes, I guess. Yep. There you go. See ya. <laughs>